Yes. Right. As the Fae would demand. <laughs> That's right. They would indeed. Here's a track. Are you even a Fae if you haven't captured a mortal's firstborn son? <gasps> Yeah, right. I mean that's you're supposed to do that, right? Yeah, uh, it's a rite of passage. And true that. Yeah, Truth. It's like, it's like not going to prom. Fate prom. Mm -hmm. right. As a firstborn son, I was irrationally stressed out about all of the firstborn taking stuff in mythology. <laughs> mm. Sure. I was not prepared. Churning some stuff. I'm not even sure my mom would know where to get sheep's blood if she needed it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, presumably from a sheep. I think so, yeah. Right. You just kind of hook up a little faucet. Now, does it have to be an actual sheep, or can I just dress as a sheep and use my blood? Oh, you know, I think that works, yeah. Technically. I mean, Jesus did it, right? He's the Lamb of God or whatever? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I really All right, change my name. <laughs> To Lamb of God, <laughs> I love it. Well, I know Jesus Fraser, <laughs> David. I don't know. <laughs> right. mm. Alex, did you ever hear about my um, my superhero? The uh, which one? Psychiatrist um, who um, worked uh, worked in Seattle and loved coffee and was you know the star of a nope. radio program. Nope. And his power, <laughs> his nope. power, he could turn into a very dense. Nope. Sort of glass-like <laughs> nope. substance, and nope. Its name was Crystal Fraser. Nope. Ah, uh, <laughs> Trithology of money. <laughs> no, I'm in trouble. Um, yeah. Listen, it's Mutants and Master Man Monday. We are just hamming it up, and my apologies. Um, sort of. I mean, you know, we do this for fun, but uh, yeah. Sorry, you know, not I, sorry. Sorry, not sorry, but uh, yeah, it is um, uh, Mutants and Masterminds Monday, and today we are going into the Fey Realms, and, um, you know, I, you know, that track that I just played, I don't have a name for it yet, one negative hero point for Troy, rude, <laughs> um, what, um, uh, this, that was my own track. Like I made that myself, mm. just whipped it up. Um, not particularly good, but um, I've added some uh, sound effects, and um, and so I want you just to welcome our most esteemed uh, industry luminaries, uh, <laughs> dear friends of yours and mine. Sorry, there's a dog licking my foot. It's hard to Is ring. That... Hard to remain <laughs> still. <laughs> I love it. Um, here we go. Hello, friends. Good to see you. Um, Hello. I meant to play a little magical. Just, oh, I see why. Hold on. Um, little ready? fanfare. Here we go. Yeah. Well, kind of a little fanfare. Ooh. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> Are we having a flashback? I think so. Right? Have you ever said all the traumatic moments in Troy's childhood? <laughs> That's right. You know, my childhood was a joy. I mean, it was weird and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Um, do you prefer this? Now we're that's having a, a science fiction flashback. That's a, <laughs> that's a transition into the Fey realm. Mm-hmm. Because that's oh, what we're doing no. today. We're talking Fey, and yeah. uh, you know, we we went through all of the uh, the types of Fey and the um, uh, last week, and now we're talking all about um, the realm, the Fey. Mm -hmm. Now, is it realms or is it an realm? Uh, generally, realms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Generally it speaking, on how you build your fiction. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. Gotcha. So you got a little. You can have a little fun, a little flexibility. Mm -hmm. As I the like Fey it. want to do. I yes. like it. Okay, well, let's talk don't about like it. limits. Is it, you know, like, I mean, is it hard to get there? Is it, <laughs> Stan, you are right on it. I think Endora just arrived. <laughs> Endora being the best character to have ever graced the screen. Um, absolutely, yeah. So, you no, know, you, because there's a Beetlejuice musical. <gasps> oh, wow. I had no idea. Uh, Claude, hello to you. Oh, you need to look that up, Troy. It's great. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. No, I'm not, but I'm going to um let's see what? Uh 
sounds like we should be talking about meat, says David Bodie, um, contrary to the, the actual topic. Um, and then uh, Corey Alphonse yeah. is the first one reminded me of the old Star Trek teleport time. And me too a little bit. Me too. Um, you know, uh, before we dive in, I'm sorry. I wanted to just acknowledge a phenomenal actual play over the weekend. Um, also, yeah, it was wonderful. It was really good. It was good, good stuff. Um, so fun to watch. Don't lie to the nice people, Troy. <laughs> well, there's evidence. Uh, all you have to do is go to our YouTube, uh, look for Green right. Ronin, and you will find um, uh, Crystal and Team Alex subbed in. Um, we had somebody who had a baby, and so you were so gracious as to join us, and it was just a good time. It was, uh, you know, uh, uh, as promised or as hinted, there were some uh, there's some fay that kind of vis- visited um, some some trouble upon the yeah yeah. Uh, uh, Klutz has a really great tarot storyline. Mm-hmm. It was a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. I got to bully my way through Ferroberg. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex is over here busting the myth that present based characters ca- are. Uh... Are weak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You were, I was PL seven, but I had a plus fourteen intimidation. So, I had yeah, to use it. you were doing. Uh, you were doing the. Uh, yeah, you're 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 being the muscle, and uh, yeah. we were getting work done with the intimidation advantages too. Fascinate and mm. startle and daze was great. People were respecting your authority. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, you know, because that's this. This is the month. Um, it's all about the Fey realm, and you know, it happens to coincide with Pride and. You know, a, a very goodly percentage of your Mumamo cast uh, is, uh, you know, uh, resides in the Fey Realm, um, and uh, mm-hmm. at least on Friday, Saturday nights. And um, but yeah, so uh, that's what the topic is. And so, um, talk. Let, let's open up the realms. Let's, uh, you know, let's get into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this is mostly just shorthand for taking your superheroes into magical dimensions. Mm-hmm. Right. right it's magic land yeah it can be as much or as little D D as you want or it can be pure whimsy and silliness or it can be like weird psychedelic like walt simonson style journeys into other realms so mm-hmm. uh, but yeah it's basically taking your heroes into other dimensions where they fight or or encounter things that they would not normally and it run into in their day to day hero lives. Jose asks if Absolutely. Barbara Eden's Fay, and I'm going to say yes. I Could be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, strictly speaking, probably not, but I mean, you know, not, she's not. Way too white to be a gin. I'm just gonna say it. Mm. So she yeah. could, pro- she would probably be a very powerful fae who just really likes the fae or the gin. Just like that vibe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She just really wants to wear the belly dancer outfit, and I, I don't blame her. If yeah, I had right. those eyes and that belly, <laughs> you'd be the dancer. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I, lo- I love that there's a little fey action in the background there. Uh, of course, Dr. Corgi given the uh, the old chew toy a squeak. Oh, yes. Yep. Well, Corgis are notoriously fey mounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Any, any fey realm you're turning into has to have riding corgis. It's fey law. Yeah, yeah. They mm-hmm. demand it. It's true. All right, so what is the... Um, <clears throat> is there danger in traveling to these realms? Yes, it's all mm-hmm. sorts of dangers. Don't eat anything. First advice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, They're all the awesome. all the fairy laws. Oh yeah. Okay. They play by all kinds of weird laws. Almost all of their their goods and food and ointments and unguents have some kind of weird side effect. Uh, one of my favorite old, I want to say Welsh fairy tales is about a midwife who gets summoned by a fey noble to to come in an emergency and deliver his wife's baby and she does so and he's this opulently wealthy fey man and rewards her with all of this gold and silver and all of these trinkets and you know Mm -hmm. a year later he comes back and he needs her to deliver the next baby and she goes but this time she's uh 
she rubs some of the the fey ointment she's been using in into one of her eyes and through that eye she can see like it's not spectacular it's all illusion it's like a hovel uh you know all the finery is just rags all the gold she's been rewarded mm-hmm. is just acorns and leaves uh and she she doesn't say anything about it because there's you know, baby to deliver and a few weeks later, she sees him at the market and she asks about the baby. And he looks at her weird and says, what eye do you see me with? She says, oh. what eye? And he plucks it out. Yep. You're not supposed to be able to see me. <laughs> yeah. nope. So classic fairy tales are really creepy and disturbing. And I love them. And it's, they it's really are. used to play with fun narrative weirdness mm-hmm. my favorite is yep. that you kept throwing these these fey folk at me i'd be like oh cool what the what is this it's a skinless horse man like it was yeah it was hilarious just kept right. looking at more horrific things as uh <clears throat> as we went through the program the what was that yeah. you like the dantian oh the dantian okay cool yes uh, i'll check it out i'm certain they're probably wholesome fun <laughs> friendly d e n i mean every- D E N, uh, uh, mm. D A N. I think usually it's French originally. Oh, mm. okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Pull they're, them up. They're basically gossip fairies. So God, they like hanging around rich ho- rich homes, kind of like, uh, kind of like catty rich people domovoys. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, I yeah. see. Danthean. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing them. Okay. I mean, I'm not. You I don't have be a able to see them, Troy. Which eye <gasps> do you see them with? Right. Oh, don't tell mind, them that. My mind's eye. Um. <laughs> don't tell them your mind's eye. All <laughs> right. Right. That melon bower works everywhere, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> love but, it. Love it. Yeah. A lot of, honestly, a lot of what we think of these days as things that work against demons come from old Celtic mythology about what works against Fae. Yep. Uh, Indeed. Just when the Catholics arrived in the area, they co-opted all of that mythology into, you know, their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true enough. I mean, the Fae are basically, you know, or at least a lot of their fairy tales are the origins of the be careful what you wish for mm-hmm. maxim. You know, uh, not as much. I mean, I know D&D players are, are warned against wishing with, with gin and the like, but a lot of it is is making deals with the Fae um, and making sure that they uh, stick exactly to the letter of their agreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have really chaotic energy for following all of these laws that they said. Like, right? They do. They do. You know, and there's there's a lot suggesting that the the reason the Fae are so strongly bound by their very specific laws is because of their tremendously chaotic energy. It's the only thing that's holding them in check, basically, uh-huh. or arguably holding them together. Right, for that matter. Uh, but yeah, the Fae realms are basically. I mean, it depends on your view of them. They could be just like fantasy medieval realms thick forests and mountains that are taller than anything in the real world and mag- or massive rivers that are as wide mm-hmm. as the ocean and it's like in D D style settings the fey world tends to be like the wild parts of the real world just more so more so, so. Yeah. yeah every tree is a redwood that stretches hundreds of feet into the air and you know every cave is this bottomless expanse to be explored and you know everything mm-hmm. is primeval and capable of of communicating with you or taking revenge on you or giving you gifts if you help it gotcha mm-hmm. claude, claude has a question here and this is interesting you know given that we were we're, we're hot off the mm. um uh, we're not even hot anymore. Like we're almost through this month. Um, but uh, last month we talked about the omniversal kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, Claude's asking, does each Earth dimension have their own connected Fey realms, or do some of them share connected realms? Like, would Avalon connect to both Earth Prime and Anti Earth, or does that work for us? Or that's, how would we imagine? That's an interesting, that? an interesting question, and you know, something you can play around with in your own omniversal setting. 
is is whether or not the are there separate you know parallel fey realms or is fairy uh you know connection between different parallel earths can you go from one to the other through the fey realm as sort of a shortcut as a way of getting there yeah. um you know maybe the you know if if the fey realm is a reflection of parts of earth then maybe different parts of it are reflections of different earths yeah i i personally like the idea that the fey realm is this infinitely large space that mm -hmm. does connect to lots of different earths but the like the nation in the fey realm that corresponds to earth prime is different than the mm -hmm. nation in the fey realm that corresponds to paragon's earth or anti-earth right. or that gives a really interesting yeah. idea for changelings where they're just grabbing variants of you from another world and shifting like swapping two yeah. of you swapping them around oh, yeah. right? mm. you know, that would be a fun little like spatial anchor so they have a like a save point in different realities they can jump mm. to mm -hmm. oh, interesting yeah and it explains yeah. their callous disregard for not fey lives yeah well, I mean, mm -hmm. they're immortal, so I mean, mm -hmm. sure, it's like it's like having a hamster. Oh yeah, right. where you can really love your hamster and try to give it a good life, but your your hamster's only gonna live two years, maybe three. Mm -hmm. Right, so, yeah. especially if the fae are like, oh yeah, there's more versions of you out there. Mm -hmm. You know, so you are yeah. not the first person I've made this deal with. It looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> I've tweaked it a little to make it more interesting for me this time around. <laughs> so, you know, when it relates to um, to getting there, um, mm. what, what is the general sort of trope of travel to the Fey Realms? Uh, well, we've all read Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, on mm -hmm. accident mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yeah, yep. usually you can't. It's very hard to get there intentionally and very easy to end up there accidentally. Gotcha. Yes. Liminal yeah. spaces. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like Steve said, liminal spaces. Spaces that have like a strong emotion about them. So like mm -hmm. any forest won't do. But if you're in this thick, dense, moss-covered, fog-shrouded glen of the forest with this big gnarled oak looming up over you, that is a place that feels weird and powerful. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So that's a yep. place where, you know, in theory, you could accidentally end up in the Fey Realms. Mirrors mm -hmm. are also a big thing for... Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. A rabbit hole that belongs to a particularly anxious rabbit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A wardrobe. Yep. A tornado. Ah, a yep. tornado. Yes, yes. I like yes. that. Yeah. Honestly, look at Wizard of Oz or... Uh, Mm -hmm. said bed knobs and broomsticks, but kind of bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah, uh, sure. Bed, that and beyond yeah, the beyond part, yeah. you know, you just never know. <laughs> yes, yeah. If oh, you're you're trying the, the beyond movie. section. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> these right. are all stories that basically drop kids into the fey realms, where you know mm -hmm. things that don't make sense make sense. Like you know, a lion shouldn't be Jesus, but in the fey realms right right uh, you know jose brings up it's also co a common trope for the fey realms uh to have a very different uh time flow mm -hmm. yep like that yep. oftentimes you will go into the fairy realm and you'll be gone in the real world for a hundred years mm -hmm. or uh, you yeah, know, yeah you'll be there in fairy for what seems like months and only an hour will have passed in you know mm -hmm. the physical world Right, right. You know, Claude mentions, I always like the concept that people who sort of fall through the cracks of society end up interacting mm -hmm. with the Fae, like in Gaiman's, uh, Gaiman's uh, Neverwhere. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Could be where, you know, all the missing, you know, the Bermuda Triangle, you know, stuff and uh, Amelia Earhart or, you know, mm -hmm. other people on the, on the fringes. But yeah, ripping all kinds of Van Winkles. It's where all your mm -hmm. socks from the dryer end up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep. There's probably a all specific things that end up under the couch. Oh. In fact, yeah. going through the cracks in the couch is probably the most reliable way to end up in the Fey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot right. of sense. 
Okay, so then, um, what what kind of a uh, a governance and what kind of a like what are some of the things? So we've traveled there, we've fallen through the cracks of the couch, or we crawled in through the dryer, or we you know how all the ways. And uh, what, mm-hmm. what are, we're greeted with kind of this primeval forest of just ma- a magnitude beyond our. It's like whoa, mm-hmm. this is huge and beautiful and weird. And then what? Uh, then we meet a really nice caterpillar with a hookah. <laughs> and we chill until right. somebody comes and finds us. Ooh, I, yes, no, getting stoned with the caterpillar. I like that. Then you find out you were the caterpillar all along. Oh, I love yes. it. I love it. Um, sorry, what was the well, question? I mean, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the first sort of the first rule of fairy is that rules are rules. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, uh, particularly um, we're dealing with the fae. It's all about um, following proper etiquette of, mm-hmm. of being, you know, properly polite and uh, making sure that you don't make them needlessly angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of it is like giving gifts and paying mm-hmm. compliments and respecting their skills. And, uh, you know, a big part of a big part in a lot of the Fey mythology is uh you know, respecting hierarchies. So, like, mm-hmm. there's not necessarily a set government, although I think we talked a little bit last week about how there's sort of a feudalism-style court with, you know, various royalties and queens and kings and things like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, in this day and age, the Fey could reflect the real world and have a president and a senate, but it's still mm. a case of, you know, you you respect the hierarchy of society. Gotcha. Would you see a bunch of signage and sort of like, you know, rules about travel nice. or? Oh, no, you have to know the rules. <laughs> I see. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so how much of the Fey realm for our purposes, you know, as far as canon goes, have we actually um, mapped out for our purposes? Not a lot. Um, we, we mentioned different aspects of the, the Fey realm in Book of Magic um, yeah. and in a few other source books. Ooh. But, and, you know, we're also pretty deliberate about making sure it's not too strongly mapped out. Mm-hmm. Right, like, yeah, yeah. It should be a place where GMs can kind of take things and not have their players understand what's about to go on. Mm-hmm, Yeah. Yeah, Apuk, I agree with you. Uh, Apuk brings up the spirit world from Avatar uh, as one of sort of the mm-hmm. uh, depiction of uh, of a fey realm, and uh, 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 Bodhi suggests that the fey have rules like the Ferengi in Star Trek, the <laughs> rules of acquisition. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. the Ferengi are probably fey. I like it. Yeah, well, uh, Jacob. Fens. What was that? They do come from fens. Hmm. That's right. They're so do we basically whales? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's cold and it uh, rains all the time. Right. There's no word for crisp there. <laughs> there isn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know. So yeah, Jacob says. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the Fey are like playing sports in elementary school. You're expected to know the rules before you get started, and no one's going to explain them to you. No one's going to tell you. Oh, there's no day. mulligans. There's lots of kicks to the shin. Mm-hmm. And then we put people. Except the the kicks to the shin are in nucleation. <laughs> Bad news. I love it. So, uh, yeah. you, so I mean, go ahead. I'm sorry, Steve. Go ahead. Well, so one of the other aspects of of the Fey realm that you can play around with as a as a game master is it's an opportunity to change around what the heroes can do. Um, you know, if you want a story where the characters' are, powers are working differently, or they swap powers, or uh, any number of other weird things go on with what the heroes are capable of, um, the Fey Realm is a great opportunity to do that because of the just the weird, unpredictable magic uh, that's there. Uh, if you want a scenario where the characters' superpowers don't matter all that much. Mm-hmm. The Fey Realm is a great opportunity to play around with that. If you want everybody to be flamingos for one adventure. Right. Which, why wouldn't you? Yeah. 
Right. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So let's see here. A uh, couple. I'm writing uh, that in for my stream. Just let me take that real quick. <laughs> Uh, our good friend Apple Juice, um, a, a cousin of Beetle, uh, says, <laughs> uh, funny enough, uh, elementary schoolers might fare better in the Fey realm just because adults are more likely to have their preconceptions mm-hmm. about the world used against them. Yeah. Yeah. And the Fey do have a, a history of, you know, wanting those human children, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they do. Children are juicy. <gasps> They're calorie dense. Right. They're calorie dense. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Do you so one kid, you're good for a month. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, here's a question. Uh, now, would they're, are, they're actually, they're not grabbing the kids for food, are they? Or are they grabbing it for Maybe. two? two Some are. Length and, okay, gotcha. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It well, might be. Oh, sorry. No, I was thinking like the witch and Hansel and Gretel. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, gotcha. could yeah. literally be eating them, or it could just be a thing where uh, they need imagination and passion and emotion to thrive. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. nab humans and use them to kind of entertain right. themselves. And children yeah. are especially rich sources of those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kids like don't it. settle. <laughs> No, right? Mm-hmm. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Raymond says uh, if using the, uh, am I saying this right? Uh, imageria? Imageria? Majeria, yeah. Majeria, okay, gotcha. From the Paragon's book, the Fey Realm could be the outer edges of the uh, Imageria and that closely mm-hmm. touch upon the human plane of existence and thus easier for humans to stumble into without realizing it, yeah. As, as a matter of fact, that's exactly where the Fey, you know, Fey Realm is found in the Imageria. It's around <laughs> the fringes of it. I'm slowly yes, starting to realize Monsters, Inc. is a Fey Realm. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and that's a, actually, it's a good example of a fey realm that mirrors modern society. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah. If you that's want a sort of modern, high tech version of fairy, Monsters Inc. is a great model to to start from. Meet the Robinsons too. Now that I think about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. in some ways. He wasn't time traveling. He was just going in and out of the fey. Mm-hmm. And as we know, the fey realms have a different. Time runs at a different pace than the Fey Realms, which is right. again, how he can be his own dad. Mm-hmm. Now, now Craig says red caps would snatch the kids for food, I'd imagine. What's a red cap? It's a little evil gnome oh. with a red hat. Oh, those little nerds. Yeah. And yes. iron boots. And uh, yeah. I mean, according to the original myths, they use human blood to dye their caps. And if their caps yeah. ever dry out, they die. Oh. It's like, similar to Japanese kappa. Except they keep water in a bowl in their head, and if their the mm-hmm. water in their bowl drains or falls out, they die. Wow, intense! I that, that is children. That's right. You got to keep yeah. your got to keep your hat damp. Yeah. Oh, Jose brings up the great notion that you know while our heroes are adventuring in fairy, that you know the Fey have you know placed changelings of them on Earth, you oh, know, to uh, you know keep things entertaining. While they're gone, come back to find out you've signed all kinds of endorsement deals. Right. That would be a fun. That would be a fun mixed adventure where some of the heroes are in Fey with Fey heroes that the other players are alternating in. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, the other players are playing the changelings with the real heroes from their world, so the party is split. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, I like that idea. That would be a lot of fun. right. It really would be fun. I would be fun to come back after you know, kind of sorting out all the nonsense and seeing what they ordered from Amazon for you. Plus, if you let the player play the changeling, they ruin their life, not me. Yep. <laughs> right. right. It's too late to go back and get a mulligan on my uh, uh, Patreon game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to do it again, idea. Let's... <laughs> I've got an idea. I like that. Um, <laughs> Red caps equal hat vampires. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So David Bodie mentions the the notion about the the Fey as aliens, and a lot of people have have noticed the similarities between fairy experiences and alien abductions, um, mm. in terms of of you know things like distortions in time and 
uh, you know, guys. encounters in liminal space, you know, little, little people with big eyes and big heads, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all of those sorts of things and suggests mm-hmm. that, you know, maybe, maybe the Fae are aliens or the aliens or what people think are aliens are just modern fairies. I like this. Uh, apple juice, apple juice, apple juice says, wait, if time flows differently in the Fey realm, does that mean that some parts of the realm are high tech sci-fi and other parts might still have courts and feudal fantasy? Yeah. Why, why not? Great. That's great. Right. I mean, they, they could, you could basically justify a rifts game by setting it in the Fey. Yeah. Falians. Lots of Falians. Uh, Arguably the best uh, of the of the mm-hmm. trilogy. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, the Supernatural TV series did an episode linking alien abductions to fairies. Yeah, yeah. That, that seems like a natural, yeah, books and chair stacking. Sure. Poltergeists and all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Squire says, you know, oh, um, uh, apple juice, uh, maybe even uh, at the same time. Sure. You turn a corner and you, you run into something, you know, odd and then some kind of huge piece of, you know, the past that they brought from, you know, mm-hmm. your realm. And Sure. But you can make it basically as bizarre or as, you know, mundane as you want it. There could be corners of the Fey realm where things run very strictly according to like a medieval hierarchy and it's basically just a grim gritty fantasy adventure and you can have others mm-hmm. that are you know alice in wonderland levels of bizarre yeah get weird yeah, yeah absolutely right. i like this hey, villains invade the world uh they're just super mad because aliens are getting all the credit for their mischief <laughs> <laughs> right you can't abduct these mortals they're here for us to abduct <laughs> Stop that at once. <laughs> exactly. Claude. In my oh. experience, alien abductions and fey abductions feel very different from each other. Yeah, we'll have to get into that another time. Um, Hear me out. Here's the perfect sequel. Cowboys versus fairies versus aliens. As the sequel to Cowboys versus aliens. <laughs> no, I want to sequel to Cowboys versus fey. Mm-hmm. Mm, right. <laughs> Um, that will like, also allow you to, you know, play up the notion that cowboys and witches are essentially the same. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. they are. Uh, yeah, large yeah. hats. Right, that's right. Yeah, big large hats, hats, bubbling, bubbling stew pots. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm. Mm-hmm. I like this. Uh, you know, and and what if you had actually an aliens an aliens versus Fey? Um, both of them are angry at each other. They're just like, listen, you, <laughs> Faelian versus Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> green light, green light. <laughs> done and done. Yeah, the Freddy comment is a good way to get back on topic because uh, <laughs> you can decide if if the Fey realm is the same as the Dream realm in your setting, mm. or if one yeah. is a way to access the other. Like, if you've got, uh, you know, somebody who knows what's going on, but they're comatose and you need to get into their dreams. Uh, I mean, can you, right. if you have access to the Fey realm, do you have to go into that and then into their dreams through there? Or does somebody on your team need to fall asleep and you use them as a conduit to get into their dreams and then through that into the Fey to stop um, mm-hmm. Puck? Right, right, right. right. Or Fady Krueger. Or I mean, Fady Krueger is fey. just a dream fairy. Like, that's, <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Truth. Uh, so I'm looking at this. What about Miss Frizzle in the Magic School Bus? Is that a Fae situation? No, Time Lord. Time Lord. Yeah. Yes, yes. We, we, yeah, we, we have actually have touched, we have touched on Miss Frizzle before. Um, so here's a couple yep. things here. Great stuff. Um, let's see. Marvel Comics says... Uh, great fey heroes and villains um is are there fey living uh and and being on a team or being engaged in that regard um in and are there like is there a, a society of superheroes in the fey realm could be everybody has powers in the fey realm just right maybe not world shaking powers but bizarre abilities and but yeah uh, unexpected have- we have Earth Prime characters who are Fey living in you know mm-hmm. the, the real world uh, and on different teams. Like we talked last week about Wicked Licorice on the 
the candy oh, right. and mm -hmm. uh, one or two members of the Fables gang. Yep. Let's see, um, Mr. Light from Hero High is a, a you know, oh, yeah. Faye, oh, yeah. Faye nice. superhero. I was going to say that, but I didn't <laughs> want to be wrong. Uh, <laughs> you know, according to her own claims, uh, Princess Silverlight is mm -hmm. a big princess. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Sean says, didn't get a chance to post it before because I was driving, but Sean. Okay, so Sean's a Faye folk, I think is what, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sean's yeah. definitely Sean's are yeah, they do like the rules. That's true. <laughs> they do right. like the rules. They do. Yeah. Alex, you're yeah. On they, they have and they have those they have those suspiciously Celtic names. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um <laughs> there's a whole there's a uh, didn't get a chance to post it until now because driving, but um Sean and McGuire's Wayward Children series is great oh, for doorway yeah. world ideas. Mm, mm. Yes. I like it. Yeah. That's yes. it's a bizarre series, but I I really love it. So you know, generally the trope is getting through. Um, you know, uh, you've got to you know eat the mushroom to get bigger, drink the thing, or drink the thing to get bigger, eat the mushroom to get smaller, or however that works. Don't I mean, take off the shoes. Don't take off the shoes. Right. Yes, exactly. Um, all all those kinds of things. You know, what is you know, I, I we've talked a, f a couple times about the you know the, there could be a king and a queen and a court and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I you know, Steve, I really can't stop thinking about a weird sort of fey representation of government. Like that just cracks me up. Just like how ridiculous mm -hmm. it could be. Just you could just have like this fairy, just you know, bureaucrat, just like all the papers, all the papers, just kind of making a big mess, mm -hmm. and you know, almost. Yep bureaucratic and almost you for, know for anybody who wants a fun uh representation of the fey watch the cartoon hilda um yeah mm -hmm. they have all sorts of fairy beings including tiny little elves who are obsessed with paperwork mm -hmm. um and the the only way that you can see the elves is by signing all of the proper release forms mm -hmm. which are of course all the size of postage stamps <laughs> I love it. The Fay Electoral College. Claude, you are on fire mm. today. On yep. fire. Uh, Owl House is another great example of what a Fay yes. would be like, where, you know, it's filled with bizarre creatures that aren't necessarily evil, but, you know, will definitely drink human blood. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> well, excuse me. It's rich in iron and protein, probably. Yep. Owl House, my beloved. Yeah, I'm going to check these out. I like this. I okay. really do. Um, we were children. House, it is so gay. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I, John says Wayward Children series has a terrifying story set in marketplace realm where human children who try to follow the rules but don't understand them meet. Oh, okay. Oh, good. A little pick me up. A little pick me up. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> so, those. We've, we've hinted at it enough, to, or not hinted at it, but we've talked around it enough times. The Wayward Children series is. Uh, it's a portal fantasy series, like like Alice in Wonderland, like Wizard of Oz. Like Narnia. Yeah, okay. where children go into some bizarre fantastical realm. This is about what happens when they come home, and suddenly nobody believes where they've been for the last six months. And mm -hmm. they can't relate to their peers anymore because they fought ogres and, you know, saved kingdoms. Right, right, so, right. And it's had, a boarding school where parents can send their kids to get better. <laughs> but right, it's run by right. essentially Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, who's been this way before? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it. I like it. Space to yep. Be bizarre. Very interesting. You know, somebody was just mentioning. I wanted uh, Aura just mentioned uh, that uh, their professor worked on the show Hilda. I think is um, oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Cool. A lot of Hilda fans. Show. Beautiful show. Beautiful to check that out. Too, if you get the chance. Logic Core brings mm -hmm. up Gravity Falls. Yep. Um, I guess. It's better as a general high weirdness because it gets into like demons and weird technology and weird science right. and cryptids, which could all be yeah. free depending on how you want to paint it, but. Right. All right. Yeah. Have yeah. Feral gnomes running around the woods. Yeah, I mean, as you do. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, John mentions, I hate Fairyland uh, is a very over-the-top story of a young child who gets caught mm -hmm. in Fairyland trying to fulfill mm -hmm. a quest. 
gross but yep. super funny. <laughs> okay. <Very> yeah. Violent. <laughs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I, so I like it. And then, um, you know, as we're looking at some of the ways to get into it, how do, how do you get out of it? Like, what are some of the ways that you would there's, imagine? Oh, that tends there's to, usually a trick to it. <laughs> yeah. It tends to be very hard to get out of fairy realms in all the mm -hmm. traditional stories. You basically have to be let out by a powerful mm -hmm. fae. Yep. You murder right. all of the good witches enemies. And then she tells you how to go home. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you need an artifact, or usually the portals back to Earth are hidden somewhere far away and dangerous to reach. So sometimes the whole event... sneak past a dragon. Mm -hmm. Gotta trick them, Stan says. Sure. Yeah, there's some trickery mm -hmm. going on for sure. Uh, Bodhi asks, <laughs> David says, is Bigfoot Fay? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes he's a Chillaxon <laughs> in Earth Prime. Earth Prime of... He's an alien. Right. But mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sometimes he's a gravy spot. Like, like Crystal says, a lot of the you know sort of forty and weirdness and cryptids and all of that could be fae. Oh yeah, Starhaven could be fae. There's no reason. There's no reason a moon right. should have a city on it. Right? <laughs> Are the preservers <laughs> fairies? Is that where they all went? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as Jupiter. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. Right? It's ridiculous. That's a lie made up by big astronomy. Right, yeah, it's David. I think you're onto some. I think you're onto something. You have to be annoying enough for the Fey. <laughs> the idea that you would annoy the Fey so badly that they'd be like, "Get out! Get out!" How a lot of these stories work. Where you, I like it. You either have to. Well, Coraline is a great example of. Mm. Yeah. Once you. Yes. Uh, of a powerful fey that traps you in a realm, and the the only ways out are either this one door she can lock whenever she wants, or she gets so pissed off with you she just chucks you back to the house. Right? Yeah. Oh no, I guess you're right. I mean, when I think about the the popular sort of fairy tales, or like I, I keep thinking of Rumpelstiltskin. Um, yeah, you basically thwart them, you make them angry, or mm -hmm. you know, yeah, frustrate them, or you uh, learn your lesson, like in the Page Master. That I'm right. not familiar with. That. What I is the Page Master? <laughs> Look, okay, I just, I, you were talking about how do you get out of the Fey Realm, and I was like, Page Master is the fairy world. Totally. 100%. <laughs> I mm -hmm. gotcha. I realized nobody has seen that movie except you and I. <laughs> <laughs> this is me once again recommending Page Master to everybody at home. <laughs> As someone did mention earlier in the chat, uh, Never Ending Story being a Fey Realm. Oh, that, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. Without a right doubt. Right down to the climax where the only way to save the world is to give the Empress a new name. Right. Right, yes. yes. Um, Names are very powerful things in the fairy realm. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Jacob mentions... Um, there we go. Uh, that there's a wonderful Canadian TV series called Lost Girl about a woman who discovers she's fae. And there's a secret mm -hmm. fae world interacting with the normal world. It's very much like a world of darkness setting. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it yep. could be it could be a very cool sort of modern noir urban fantasy realm instead of, you know, classic right. high fantasy. Uh, mostly what really makes it fae is that people are larger than life. Elements of it are larger than life. So... You know, the homeless guy isn't just a homeless guy who talks to himself. He's, you know, the prince of rats and or mm -hmm. who can control filth and anything that's discarded or is a prince right. of the lost who can find and control anything that, you know, everybody, anybody else loses track of. Yeah, now, Claude that's where you get, you know, inspiration from things like Neverwhere and the Fisher King. And, mm -hmm. you know, oh, sure. Yeah, right, right. Uh, it, it reminds me a little too of the of the trope of, or you know, what happened in Men in Black, right? You know, the the mm -hmm. homeless guy was a, you know, you know, the dog talked, and the newspaper person was a right. you know, two aliens in a sack or whatever. Um, but this, uh, Claude says, I have to once again rave about the fact that Earth Prime had a Sasquatch war. Is that a thing that happened, Claude? Are you just making some? stuff up here you just want me to read something dumb because i'm a dummy um share your words claude yeah, exactly exactly we'll wait silently yeah, yeah. The soft you watch wars are you referring to yeah so many um let's see right. yeah yeah you know so yeah. i want to 
Go ahead. I want to mention that although we talk a lot about how fairy is supposed to be both difficult to intentionally enter and difficult to intentionally leave, in your mutants and masterminds campaign, you could easily decide that your hero team has a headquarters that's partially in fairy um, and that at the very least they have sort of like a fey embassy or something yeah. or the equivalent yeah. thereof, you know, that they can get in and out of no problem if you want to give the characters a cool magical headquarters that's bigger on the inside for some reason and has a doorway that leads into a fairy glade or something. Um, you can totally do that. You know, Craig mentions, I'm suddenly imagining a team of heroes who gained their badass crime fighting skills from being frequent adventurers to the Fey realms when they were younger. That could be a whole team. Be, yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting. Of You know, what did those young adventurers do when they grow up? They're like, well, we can fight crime. <laughs> like, right. we're supervillains in this world. It's a great foundation know. for a magic-focused superhero team or campaign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Human villains aren't nearly as scary as fairy villains. Right. Yeah, like, but we fought about, ogres. These guys aren't tough. What about villains who have also visited the Fae and survived? Mm. Right. right. Yeah. You know, Great arch rivals. Not every kid who gets out of the Fae comes out well adjusted and heroic. Right. Mm -hmm. And what if they're just thirsty to get back and they're trying everything they can and they're just causing all kinds of mayhem in the, you know, uh, in on Earth? And uh, sure. Yeah. Well, especially if they if they've made a deal with someone for a lot of power and they owe a big debt. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, let's see. Or worse, you you owe a big debt that is you know firstborn children of an entire city. Mm -hmm. Oh right, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Fairy also includes things like Bloody Mary. Yep. Really? Sure, headless horsemen and. Okay, okay, all yeah, right, you're yeah. expanding my... They are yeah. cute and weird. Some of them are disturbing and horrific and... Right. Have yes. powerful urban legends tied to them. Oh, Sean, you're fine. Um, yeah, yeah. No, not not a worry. Any any chance I get to give you the business, uh, we're fine. Um, but uh, Logic Core, I am 100% here for a fairy Sentai team. Yeah, I was going to ask what that is. What's a Sentai team? <laughs> uh... Basically, the Power Rangers. Okay. Oh, sure, sure, sure. They're a common origin, and they usually morph into color-coordinated costumes and usually can summon, like, vehicles or robots that combine together. Nice. Rawhead and Bloody Bones. Yeah. Knuck Knucklave. Really creepy fairies. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely, their names are very evocative. For sure. Um, all right, so... so in the, you know, when we're looking at multiple Fey realms, are these Fey realms uh, aware of each other? Are they, you know, are there some that are, you know, just like how, how, how is that sort of determined? I mean, I like to play it up where there's a bunch of different Fey realms, usually like tied mm -hmm. to different regions on Earth or different emotions. Like there's a Fey realm related to depression, there's a Fey realm related mm. to joy, there's a Fey realm related to confusion, and you. You know, different creatures are native to different ones, and they can kind of come and go, or trade, or have rivalries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, it's all basically what you want it to be for your campaign. So it could be like there's a Fey realm that's just the primeval forest, and there's a Fey realm that's just you know an endless city, and there's a Fey realm that's all caverns and caves, and there's a Fey realm that's an endless mm -hmm. ocean. But interesting. You know, I was thinking about this, uh, an odd, um, what if there was a, a, a you, but an opposite you, and maybe it was, um, I don't know, something happened, you were split in some magical way, and part of you was in Fae, and part, mm -hmm. of you, part of you was in uh, on Earth, and what if everything that you did in the Fae world, you experienced on Earth, and vice versa? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you something weird's going on. You have to kind of stop and maybe, you know, on, on one side, on the face side, you're doing something that is just really ruining your, your whole situation on Earth. Like, you know, you're, you're burping magic. You're, you know. Uh, I think at this point, you're pitching yep. your urban fantasy novel to us, Troy. I think I might be, yeah. I, I think I might be. So um, that's why I wake up with a bad neck now that I've turned 31. Curse you, fairy Alex. Right. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, real quickly, Jose says on the uh, Kinder side, my neighbor Totoro can be a face story, even though it's actually a Shinto one. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how's, Troy, uh, speaking, speaking of that idea, um, Ethan Aldrich has a, a, a pair of graphic novels called Estranged. Um, that are basically about a um, a young about a, a young boy who discovers that he's a changeling, um, and uh, has to go um, and encounter the actual boy who was abducted into fairy and has uh... grown up there and is now a knight in fairy, um, and the two of them have to sort of work together, um, and you know then they're then they're both sort of working out like who gets to stay on earth, and right. who gets to come to fairy and. <laughs> Good origin for uh, it's a, a villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's a great, uh, a great, fun, uh, beautifully illustrated graphic novel. You know, we've got so many ideas, and I, I was going to read some of these and get into it, but it is two fifty nine. I know we started a little bit late, but we gotta, you know, um, time is different in fairy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So we've been here for a year, friends. Um, you know, mm-hmm. appreciate. But uh, great topic, and a lot more to unpack. I am working really uh, diligently to grab all of our, um, all of your recommendations, friends, that you shared uh, both last show and this one. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. the I can't get to the chat until um, it, it's done processing through the tubes. Um, so uh, yeah, I just need to find time to do All my favorite Fae, Fae Realm movies for people. Yeah, mm. I really love it. And uh, and, I'll, and we'll post that um, uh, resource list for everybody. Um, you know, so it is um, Monday. I want to say uh, a happy Juneteenth. And I also want to say, mm-hmm. you know, looking at what we've got going on for this week, we've got some big announcements coming probably tomorrow about uh, something you're working on, Steve. Um, maybe you don't want to share the announcement, but what are you working on, Steve? Sure. I mean, you know, speaking of uh, folks brought up the notion of, of fairy being sort of the place where people on the fringes end up. And that's sort of a theme that we're also exploring in our Twilight Accord setting um, as a, a fantasy realm of what if, you know, um, queer people on the margins of society find their way, you know, into a kind of shadow realm um, that is, you know, out on the on the fringes and find some, you know, fabulous, you know, ancient, you know, sort of ruins to explore uh, there. So. We're playing around with that that theme quite a bit ourselves. Nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and lots of great content coming out for that and uh, already up, um, frankly. You know, yeah. the yeah, there'll be some even some more tomorrow. So we are uh, rolling out more stuff tomorrow. Yeah, check it out at uh, patreon.com slash twilight accord, and you will find um, you'll also of course find the mutants and masterminds Patreon where Magic mm-hmm. happens as well, and that's uh, patreon.com slash mutants and masterminds. Um, Alex, what do you got cooking? Well, we're finally back at twitch.tv slash untold stories project tonight after our two week break for Origins and my secret mission last week. Um, we are going to be entering a preserver pyramid tonight where supposedly a still living preserver is hiding out so we'll see how that goes what yeah mm. it's gonna be spooky the name of the episode is man on the silver mountain for the people who like ronnie james dio <laughs> um <laughs> i also um this weekend we are having a massive trevor project fundraiser for uh june 25th and june 26th we'll be awesome. doing uh two whole days of streaming so i'll be running a bunch of games and Ooh. We'll be chatting to folks, and it'll be fun. Hope fun, we'll be fun. Raising money for a good cause. That's right. That's great. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Squire says, I've been really enjoying the stuff out of the Patreon for both games. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Frando. Uh, Crystal, um, how about you? What do you, you got anything cooking before we... Uh... Uh, I did a playthrough of the new Ninja Turtles game with my friend Param. Uh, if you're oh. in the RPG podcast space, you might know him from the No Direction podcast or from... Mm-hmm. Uh, print your games 3d printing wargaming podcast uh he he dabbles in just about every corner of fandom so i imagine everybody has met him and doesn't know it yet mm. nice okay so that was a record uh, you recorded that and um yep. oh we'll nice okay well soon 
Nice. Well, we'll look forward to that. Hey, I want to thank the crowd for, um, you know, hanging out and uh, you're, you're just so deep in lore and I love every minute of it and wish we had a, a couple more. We're already three minutes over. You're getting more of us than you'd ever bargain for. Um, so thank you for that. And, uh, you know, let me, I'm going to have to, you know, say to everyone, have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, stay safe. Happy Pride. Uh, of course, happy Juneteenth, and um, we will see you Thursday for Thursday Age, and um, where we talk about you know all kinds of age related stuff. And of course, I'm talking about the Adventure Game Engine. So you know, I'm going to cast my little fairy magic. Oh, here we go. Ready? Oh wait, that's no, not it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't work out quite the way I'd hoped. Uh, here we go. How about this? Eminem Everybody. is so highbrow, everyone. <laughs> no, I don't mm-hmm. know that idea where it comes from. <laughs> everyone, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're having too much fun. I really, truly enjoy the rest of your week. We really got to go. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.